Welcome back to Channel 37. Since Lily is still in the US working on her pilot's license, I thought I would build a project that I've wanted to do for a very long time. It's the Euroscope Oscilloscope by Plum Audio. An oscilloscope is a measurement instrument that visualizes waveforms, so you can see how this could be fun and educational when you're creating sound within Eurorack. This video is made possible by Philip from Pusherman, who gifted us the PCBs and panels for the Euroscope and the expansion board. Pusherman is a great source for panels and PCBs. They're based in the UK and we've bought many panels from them. Let me show you what you need to build your own Euroscope. The first thing you'll need is a DSO150 DIY kit. These can be purchased very affordably from Banggood or AliExpress. In fact, we already have one. This is the old one. And you may have seen it, for example, when we used it to debug the Antumbra 6 mix. But this one never fit properly in its case and it's not winning us any beauty awards. So we got a second one for this video. For the DSO, you will find a pair of probes, which we won't need, so I'll throw them out. A manual, which we will need, so set it aside. The small control board and the interface board. And some control hardware. Now for this build, we won't need the case, so set that aside as well. The next thing you'll need is a PCB and front panel from Pusherman. These are in this envelope. Let's see what we received. The Euroscope front panel and conversion board. And the final thing you need is a mix of through hole and surface mount parts. We ordered these from Mauser. Except for these two little diodes, which were not available due to the chip crisis. So we got a reel of 100 from AliExpress, and I'm curious to see if these are going to work. And finally, we ordered these few parts from Thonk. They have the sub-miniature switches and the knob cap for the encoder. That's all the parts you need. Now let's go build a Euroscope. Start with the conversion board, wipe it down with IPA alcohol, stick it to your working surface, apply a tiny dab of solder paste to all contacts. For the IC footprints, draw a thin line of paste near the outside of the contacts. First, place the two diodes. Note that these are polarized. Then, the voltage regulator, TL072 op amp, tantalum capacitor, which is polarized, three 0.1 UF capacitors, two 10 UF capacitors, and these are polarized, the 47 UF capacitor, 4.7 ohm resistor, 51 ohm resistor, and 10 M resistor. Preheat the pan for two minutes, then ramp up the temperature for another two minutes until all solar paste reflows. Next up, the DSO kit. Use a hot air gun or just pliers and a solder iron to remove the power socket. Then place the four push buttons. Solder them in place from the top to keep them from falling out. Then flip the board and do the remaining pins. Now solder the tall controller. This is not the small controller included in the kit. These are all the parts in the kit that you won't need. Just set them aside. The resistors in the kit are not labeled, so measure all of them and label them for later use. Next up is the analog board. Place one 510K resistor, 5.1M resistor, 1.2M resistor, 11K resistor, three 1K resistors. 300 ohm resistor, two 150 ohm resistors, a 91 ohm resistor, 30 ohm resistor, two 15 ohm resistors, three K resistor a 130 ohm resistor. Solder them all from above, it's just easier. Next up are the capacitors. Place them in this order to get the values just right. First, 0.1 UF capacitor, 330 PF capacitor, 1 PF capacitor, 
150p F capacitor. Solder these from above too, then flip the board and trim the leads. Now it's time for the electrolytic capacitors, which are polarized. Solder in place and clip the leads. Next up is the two row pin header. Keep it in place with some cardboard, solder the corner pin and check that it's flush. Then solder all remaining pins. Now back to the conversion board. First place the three pin header. Again solder a corner pin first. Then the Eurorack power connector using the same method. For a test signal, place a jumper over the pins labeled Tone. Then place two jacks and the subminiature switches. Note that the flat side of the shaft faces up. This is a good time to test the unit. Check for 9 volts on the power rail pad. It's not necessary to cut this panel like I did. Place these two boards next to each other. Solder a jumper cable in place. Solder it to the matching pad on the other board. Keep repeating this for all six jumper cables. They are in the same place on both boards. Trim excess leads. There's one more jumper cable that goes to a different place on the analog board. And finally one connected to the control board. The holes are a bit small for the screws, so enlarge them with an oyster shucking knife. Be mindful of fiberglass dust. Solder a male two-pin header on the conversion board. Now place the screws and spacers. Attach the conversion board. Solder the two-pin header to the control board. Then mount the analog board using the two-row pin header. Now place the front panel and attach a few nuts. Solder all of the control hardware. Then check if the device powers up. Now it's time to calibrate. For this, the jumper should be on the two pins marked Tone. Hold the adjust button for three seconds to bring up the testing signal amplitude display. Press the adjust button to set the amplitude to 0.1 volt. Set the sensitivity to 50 millivolts, then turn trimmer C3 until the rectangle on the screen looks sharp and flat. Push adjust again to get a 3.3 volt test signal. Change the sensitivity to 1 volt. Turn C5 until the rectangle is sharp and flat. That's it. Now you can stick the screen to the panel. Replace the front panel, turn the unit off, and mount the PCB with long metal screws and spacers. Then 
Then place the front panel nuts. That's it, your Euroscope is finished. The Euroscope is built and racked, it's showing a steady sawtooth way from the Mini Brute. Now it's time to review it ballroom style. The categories are Face, Crave, Groove and Noob. First of all, the face category. How does it look? I think that the front panel is really sleek. It does not belie the kind of DIY project that's going on in the back. It looks as professional as any oscilloscope that you can get in Eurorack format. And I just really like the plain, easy to read black faceplate. So in terms of looks, it's an absolute winner. 10 out of 10. Second is the Crave category. How much do we want it? Here opinions might be divided. Some people just like creating sounds and using their ears might be enough for them. So if that's you, perhaps you don't need an oscilloscope. The second category are people who have an academic curiosity about sound. So if you are teaching others about patching or if you are recording YouTube videos about modular synthesis or if you just like to have a cognitive understanding of how certain manipulations to the waveform influence the timbre that you're hearing, an oscilloscope is a really great tool. It allows you to see, for example, how a filter smooths out angular characteristics of your waveform until you're left with just a sine wave fundamental. It also shows you how distortion or clipping amplifies the signal before literally limiting it and clipping off the tops of the waveform, which makes it more and more similar to a square wave. It shows you how a wave folder actually folds the wave. So that can be pretty mesmerizing and it can also be edifying in a way to learn more about how the physical properties of an oscillating system produce a certain sound. The third category is the groove category. How much does it groove? It doesn't groove. Nothing about it produces sound. You just input a signal here and out comes a buffered copy of the unaltered signal. So you wouldn't use it in groovy patches at all. The final category is the noob category. How easy is it to build? It's not difficult, but it is really fun and diverse. So what I liked most about this build is that it's quite substantially different from other Eurorack modules that we've built lately. For example, we have some of the Bufaco and Rebel Tech modules here. You just get a package with a PCB, a front panel, all of the through hole components. It's through hole all the way. So you just get in one mode of doing things all the way until you have a finished module. Then another recent module we built, the Casutronics Quantizer. That was a lot of fun because first we had to mount several SMD components and then the rest was through hole. Now we get to the Euroscope. It's a bit of everything because it comes with this adapter board that is all surface mount. So you saw that we used the pan baking methods to assemble that. Then you have to actually remove some parts from the original DSL 150 kit. And then you start using patch wires to connect the different boards. So this has much more of a DIY spirit and vibe to it than many of the other projects that we've built. That makes it a very fun project to build. However, there's also a downside. And the downside is that everything fits together just a little less perfectly than if the whole kit is designed by a single person. So if we were to dismount the Euroscope, you'll see that the boards in the back are a little bit wonky to make sure that both the screen and the controller are correctly aligned with the front panel at the same time. Also, the screws don't protrude quite far enough to connect all of the little piggyback boards to the main board. So it's a little bit more of a jumble of patch cables and improvised electronics in the back. But still, it's a fun project. And for the price, it can't be beaten. It's a pretty affordable option if you want an oscilloscope in your Eurorack. But the remaining question is, is it easy for newbies? I don't think so. I think that this is a good project if you've experimented a little bit with all of the techniques required to build it, that is to say you've assembled some SMD, you've removed some SMD components, maybe you have some patch cables from breadboarding. If you're at that stage in your experience, this is a good module to build. If you're an absolute newbie, it will be challenging. 
all in all, I'm very happy with this addition to our rack. It's going to improve the visual appeal of our videos and it's going to help us explain how different patching techniques work a lot better. With the review out of the way, now it's time for a little addendum to this video. Originally, we had intended to set this video apart from the rest by also building the Euroscope Expander, which can be used to remotely trigger the module and to visualize three additional digital channels. In order to use this, you need to upgrade the Euroscope to the open DSO firmware. You may have noticed that in the build video, we did not address the expander. In fact, we've cut all mention of the expander from the video because it doesn't work. Our experience with this was a little disappointing and a little frustrating, also because there was no good support available and it seemed that other people shared the same frustrations. First of all, the version of the OpenDSL firmware that is available on the Euroscope GitHub is not up to date and it doesn't work. I went and found the latest upgrade of that firmware from its original programmer. That works just fine, but it doesn't seem to be very well suited for audio rate signals. It was very hard to visualize just a single cycle of the waveform as the Euroscope is displaying right now. And arguably, this is the most interesting view for someone who uses it to visualize sound. When we asked for help, we were plainly told that OpenDSO is no longer supported and that you don't need the expander or OpenDSO. It would have been nice to know that beforehand. So to anyone watching this video, we recommend that you don't buy the Euroscope expander. Don't buy! Don't buy! It's useless. But if we forget about the expander, the Euroscope is actually really cool and it's really affordable. So if you have an interest in visualizing waveforms, we definitely recommend that you build one. That's our video for the Euroscope. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. It would make a lot of difference for us. For the next video, hopefully I'll be joined by Lily, who should be back from the United States. Take care and see you next time.